Well, hello there, peeps. Hey, let's take a look at average velocity. So um, this is a concept that is very similar to speed. Really quickly, speed is just the amount of distance traveled over the amount of time. So units that we're familiar with, miles per hour, and in the MKS system, we shall use meters per second. But I wanna really speak about average velocity in that it's the vector form of speed. It has both magnitude and direction. So average velocity is the displacement over the time interval. So mathematically, it looks like this. <clears throat> we have V, and I'm gonna call it V bar. The bar signifies average, and notice the vector notation, the arrow above the V. It's equal to delta X over delta T. Remember the delta is the Greek letter that signifies change in. So it's the change in X, or your position, which is called displacement, over change in time. So that's the added part here for velocity. We've had displacement before, now we add the element of time, and this is what gives us velocity, okay? So length over time. Okay, so if we look at it over here, it's going to be x minus x naught, both vector quantities, over t minus t naught. So the arrow again signifies that it's a vector quantity. Time, however, is a scalar quantity. Time only goes in one direction, so we can pretty much consider it always to be positive. We don't have time machines yet that can go backwards so that until that point, uh, time is considered to be a scalar. <laughs> and so it's very useful to represent these two variables together, the two quantities of displacement and time together in a graph. I call it a position versus time graph, okay? So here we've got our position x in meters, and on this axis over here, this horizontal axis is the time axis, okay? So don't get confused, usually you see x on the, well, what you consider the horizontal x axis. x represents the position, and t represents time. It's customary to put time on the horizontal axis when coming up with these graphs. So what we have here is t uh, a position 10 meters. We start off at the origin over here, and something in time is moving forwards up to this location over here. In blue, we have this straight line, and in this dotted red line, it's a curve. Let me just hold off on describing what that means in a moment. Here we have the definition of velocity. It is the change in position over change in time. So we have the displacement over change in time, and x, minus x naught over t minus t naught, same as we saw before. But now we're gonna look at it a little bit differently and realize that this is the point slope form of the slope. In other words, this quantity over here on a graph algebraically would determine the slope of this line. So let's take a look at it. We have x, okay, the x axis over here, which represents the position, I'll call it the position axis so I don't confuse you so much, the position axis here, and that's considered to be the rise because it goes up and down on this particular graph. And then the run, which is t, this part is the run. So if I measure the rise over run, 10 divided by five, that will give me the slope, which gives me the average velocity. So let's check it out. X is 10 meters. That's where we end up, and our x naught, this value over here, is where we began during this interval, and that was at the origin, so zero meters. So 10 minus zero is 10. The time interval was from um, zero to five seconds, so we end at five seconds, and our initial time, original time, was zero. So we have five seconds minus zero seconds, or five seconds. 10 divided by five is two. The value of this slope is two meters per second. Rise over run, rise over run, gives us the units. We can see that the unit here is m meters, the unit here is s. So meters per second, rise over run, okay? Um, when this line is straight, it indicates that the velocity is constant. A constant slope means that the velocity is also constant. But the average velocity of the red line, this dotted red line, is the same. It's still two meters per second, because if I take this interval, the ending, uh, position and ending time, 
minus the, um, so if you subtract the positions and the time, you still get 10 minus zero over five minus zero. That's the same slope. The difference is that in the way that this traveled, the curve indicates a non-constant velocity. That means you can tell that this is curving and when it's curving, the slope is constantly changing. So we have something called an acceleration. All right. But for now, we're going to deal with the case where we have a constant velocity, where the constant velocity is the same as the average velocity. One more example. <laughs> And so with the second position versus time graph here, we have a slight difference in that we have two phases of motion to consider. Okay, there are two time intervals to consider. And one is this flat piece over here from zero to five seconds, where the position remains at 10 meters throughout. It's constant, the position's constant, meaning that there's no motion. And so we can see that a flat slope represents a velocity of zero, not moving, okay? Um, to prove that, let's look at it mathematically as well. Um, and then we'll look at the second segment of motion, which is this clear new slope over here. Anytime the slope changes, that's a new phase of motion we've got to analyze. It's best to deconstruct this into two parts to make it much easier to analyze. Okay, so we have V1, and V1 is the change in interval X1 over interval T1. Okay, so it's x minus x naught over t minus t naught. Well, where do we begin? In this case, at 10 meters. And we also end at 10 meters. So it's 10 meters minus 10 meters. So x naught is the beginning point. X is where we go. We actually don't go anywhere because the position remains constant. So although time is moving, we see that the position is not. And anytime the numerator is zero, that means there's no motion, zero meters per second, because zero in the numerator means that the value is zero. Flat slope, okay? Well, let's look at phase number two. <clears throat> phase number two goes from position 10 meters to position negative five meters. That means we probably, in fact, not probably, we definitely have to be moving backwards. We have to move, if we're moving from positive displacement uh, position relative to the origin, that means the displacement is going to be negative to get us down here, okay? And what we can see is that, yeah, this slope is moving this way, it's a negative slope. So we're gonna have a negative velocity. And so let's look at the mathematics and see what happens for a value, okay? So in that second phase of motion, V2, we've got the change in x2 over change in time two. So it's x minus x naught, t minus t naught, okay? So what's our initial position? What's the original position? x naught is at 10 meters, so that goes here. And for x, we have negative five. So negative five minus negative 10 is negative 15. So it's like negative five plus negative 10 is essentially what this is. Over the time interval, which is 10 seconds minus five seconds or five seconds. So negative 15 meters divided by five seconds gives us negative three meters per second. Okay, so we have a couple things. The reason why the mathematics is important is because, okay, we already deduced that we're gonna be moving in a negative direction, but how quickly is that gonna happen? What's the meters per second? Well, that's where, this comes in and this is the slope that we read. So now you're realizing that the steepness of the slope has something to do with the amount or the magnitude of the velocity. So the faster something moving, the steeper the slope will be. And that's how these graphs work. We can look at some of their features, but we can also use this strict definition to analyze them and unite the um, concept of displacement with one of time. Thank you, Morad, out.